Praise the Lord, everyone. Sean back with another video for you all. I wanted to come and bring a video about how one can repent and still not be saved. Now, I know this may come as a shock and it's probably like, well, Sean, you've done videos, you know, about repentance and how, you know, you have to repent and believe on Christ to be saved. And yes, I believe that and that alone saves you. But what I do want to bring you all is the fact that when we use the word repent, it is possible for someone to repent of one one false thing and still not believe in you know the true gospel believe in the true christ you know you could repent of joseph smith of mormonism but then believe in muhammad of islam you know you can go from one false faith to another false faith so you know when we repent you know we have to always make sure that is understood you go from believing in one false thing and to actually believe in anything the only thing that will save you and i just wanted to just to kind of just bring this out uh, real quick so here in mark 1 14 through 15 it reads now after that john was put in prison jesus came into galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. So we see the first recordings of Jesus preaching is him saying, repent and believe. So he's saying, turn from what you all used to put your trust in. Now that I'm here, believe on me that I'm here. So we see that repentance, yes, you do have to repent and then believe in the thing that will actually save you. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, I wanted to bring you all this first because this is interesting. Matthew 27, 1 through 4. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, that being Iscariot, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself. And brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to that. So here we see that. You know, we know the story that Judas was, you know, once he betrayed Jesus, you know, he did feel remorse and um, he ended up taking his own life, unfortunately. But here, the fact that we actually see that the word repent or repented is being used. We see that there was a change of heart about Judas. And I believe that it was an actual true heartfelt repentance. Like, I believe he really, truly felt bad. But you see the fact that um, he still, he repented. He felt remorse. Uh, he was, he regretted. But he still didn't believe in the gospel that, that Jesus was who he said he was. So even though he repented, he felt remorse and he felt as sincere remorse. It wasn't a, it wasn't a godly remorse or a godly sorrow, one that turns you to God. It was just the fact that he just felt bad that, hey, I got this man that didn't even do anything condemned. You know, now it was good for him to feel that way, but unfortunately, it didn't lead him to repent and do as, as we read in Mark 1, 14 through 15, to repent and believe the gospel as Christ proclaimed. So here in Acts 1, 6, 16 through 17, it reads, Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have, have been fulfilled, 
which which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus, for he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. So the reason I'm showing this is because you'll have people that say, well, you know, if, if you're saved, you have to basically b become a disciple of Christ. You know, you have to, you know, you, you, you give your life to the Lord. You, you know, do these things as like part of your salvation. And while yes, Paul says that is our reasonable service, Romans 1, 12, 1 through 2, that is our reasonable service. Us doing things or being a disciple of Christ is something that we should do, something that we ought to do, something that is important, but it is not a necessity of salvation. Us being a disciple of Christ is not what gets us through that sheep door uh, that that's described how it's only one door that we can go through. That's not going to get us through the door. Now, you know, the, the, the writers will tell us that, you know, you want to make sure, you know, you're of the faith. And basically when you, if you have someone that profess Christ, you know, you can believe to say, okay, this person believes in Christ and they're doing these works. So I believe that this person, you know, based off their confession and what I'm seeing is say, but this is us looking from the outside. We can't look at the heart. And I believe Judas was someone who said the right things, did the right things. So on the outside, these people counted Judas, the apostles counted Judas as a brother in Christ. Lo and behold, it he wasn't. So here we see, it says, for he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. So Judas was a bona fide disciple, hand selected, just like the rest of them. Yet he wasn't, he still wasn't a believer. So making, so a person being a disciple of Christ does not mean you're saved. It just means a disciple means you follow after someone or you're under somebody's guidance basically x 1 24 to 25 and they prayed and said thou lord which knowest the hearts of all men notice that it's the lord who knows the hearts we don't know the heart the most we can do is look at a person's actions and we believe the actions showcase what's in the person's heart but we don't know ultimately we don't know but it says the Lord knows and only the Lord knows. Okay. So it says thou Lord, which knoweth the hearts of all men show whether of these two thou hast chosen that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression failed that he might go to his own place. Now, um, they were trying to find a replacement person, the apostles, uh, after Judas took his own life and they were praying that God will lead them in this uh, selection. But the reason I'm showing this passage is just to show that it says that Judas uh, went to his own place. And, you know, unfortunately that wasn't a place, you know, God told, God told his apostles that, you know, he uh, prepared rooms for him, you know, in his father's house. So if Judas went to his own place, that means he didn't go where the apostles went. So I'm showing this just to show that Judas indeed, you know, he is in a place of torment. So he, even though he repented, he did not repent and truly believe still. So just because you can repent, you can still repent and not turn to the right thing. You can still turn from one wrong thing to another wrong thing. John 6 and 64, but there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. So Jesus is making known that this indeed was Judas. If we look at the same chapter, 7 verses 70 to 71, Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you, twelve? And one of you was a devil. He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. So 
we see here that, of course, you know, we, if you believe in Christ, you believe that he is the son of God, God had come in the flesh, and he knows everything. So he says, I knew from the beginning who you all didn't pick, who all didn't, don't, doesn't believe in me. And he says, have I not chosen you 12 and one of you is a devil? So he literally chose Judas Iscariot, knowing good and well he didn't believe in him and he was going to betray him. Yet he was numbered, as we see in Acts 1, he was numbered with the apostles as part of their ministry. So, yes, you know, you'll have people that say, well, you know, Judas, you know, he wasn't an apostle. He wasn't an, a disciple. Yes, he was. He was a, he, he was an apostle. He was a messenger sent out. He was a disciple. He followed Christ. He followed the teachings of Christ. I'm pretty sure he lived his life according to those teachings. But inwardly, he would, you couldn't label him a believer. You could label him an apostle, a disciple, but you couldn't label him a believer. And that's what makes the difference. Even if you're not an apostle or a disciple, if you're a believer, that is what saves you and keeps you saved. Once you're saved, that's it. Now, from there, we should be disciples and apostles, no doubt. But if you're talking about what gets you there, it's you being a believer first. That's what gets you there. So I just I just wanted to bring this up and show the fact of the matter is you can repent. You can regret and you can have a change of heart from one thing that's false and just because that word is used does not automatically mean that you have now believed in the right thing. You know, I think we can, we can, normally we presume that to say if you repent, that means you repent and, you, and now you believe in Christ. You know, some, some people believe, you know, repent is when you repent, that means you stop sinning. You know, but all repentance is, is essentially a change of heart, a change of mind. Now, sometimes you could change your mind just to go from, I used to believe in this, to now I don't and I believe in that. And then sometimes it's a change of heart to say, you know, I used to think this was okay and now I feel bad and I don't think this is okay to do. Whatever that may be, it could be something emotionally attached, wh whatever the case is, but the, the word itself is to have a change of heart, to, to change from point A to point B. And we see that Judas did that. He was a disciple, he was an apostle, he repented. Guess what? He still went to his own place. The one thing that he needed to do, he did not do, and that was believe. And I don't even believe that Judas Iscariot was necessarily a, a bad guy going out and just committing robberies and just, you know, messing up. I'm not saying he was perfect, but I don't think he lived a wild life. You know, I would just assume since the other apostles did not realize that Judas was the devil in their midst when when Jesus said that they asked who is it I they started to question themselves at the last supper like is it I so when Jesus said that you know I'm pretty sure they didn't know because Judas was you know doing and living like they all were looking like a believer lo and behold he wasn't so, you know, I pray God got the glory first and foremost out of this. I pray whoever comes in contact with this video will be blessed and edified by it. I would love to hear you guys' comments and thoughts, any concerns and questions down in the comment sections below. And I pray if, you know, anyone ever wondered to say if you repent, is that, you know, if you repent, that's all there is. Well, it's a little bit more to it than that. You got to repent, yeah but you turn from the wrong thing into the right thing. And this is just to show you can turn from one wrong thing to another wrong thing. So when, when we're evangelizing, when we're telling people, you know, I think it's really important to be as thorough as possible because, you know, some people just might not know some of, some of what these words mean. And other people who may have some sort of biblical understanding may know the words, but they may have a different context in which they hear what you're saying. 
you know, you could be talking to somebody and when you say the word repent, they can interpret it as all oh, he means, okay, stop sinning. Because that's what they've been taught. That's what they believe in. So I think it's good to always make yourself be known. Just give it as plain as possible. Make it crystal clear. So, okay, until next time, I love you all. God bless.